Okay, let's uh, get this bike elevated. Start and drop the wheel. Gonna replace the uh, stock brake mount with the elevate mount, one of the three parts that are uh, part of the permanent conversion. We're replacing the stock mount with the elevate mount that will allow you to run the original caliper and then have the motor mount on top. And with the two rotor sizes that we are currently making, the 180 and 203, we have different mount for each one. But if you have a frame that is designed for 160 bare or 180 with an adapter, um, we have options for both on the same mount. Okay, and then with the mount on, we can go ahead and reattach the caliper. After uh, feeding a little bit more hose through, I'm now able to get the brake caliper bolts um, just started. Going to leave them loose so we can get the caliper nice and centered. Um, the elevate mount includes this hole, so that way if you need to work on your brake, if you're disconnecting it, bleeding it, um, centering it, if it's rubbing on your uh, rotor in the future, you still have access to it without needing to um, fully disassemble or anything. Once we've got that in place, we can go ahead and tighten back down the cable stops. Okay, and then next thing we're going to do, we're going to swap out the stock rotor for the Elevate rotor that also has our final drive gear mounted to it. Okay, now we've got our gear inside, rotor outside. And so with that set, we can go ahead and throw our wheel back in. Okay, and once we've got our caliper centered, we can go ahead and start getting the rest of the Elevate mount installed. So in order to get the proper gear mesh between the drive unit and the hub mounted gear, we use stacks of shims in order to dial in that height. And that will set the height of these nuts, which are the base onto which the motor will sit. Or when, yeah, once we've got the nuts mounted, go through and add the studs. We may need to take these off and uh, raise or lower the shim stack, depending on how tight the gear mesh is. But it's important with the studs to apply some um, red high strength uh, thread locker. Uh, Loctite 271 is what we're using. Um, and that's going to ensure that the studs don't uh, loosen because ultimately the tightness of these studs is how you adjust the tightness of the quick connect levers. Drop onto each one and then with those in place. We can use our drive unit and we'll check the stack height. So we're going to stick our drive unit on. and then we're checking the gap between the teeth. Here we're trying to check the gear mesh between the drive gear and the hub gear. And so we're trying to ensure that it doesn't create any excess drag as it's rolling forward. So if it is too tight, it's going to dig and drag. If it is too loose, you're on the risk of it skipping, teeth chipping. It won't uh, be able to effectively transfer power from the drive unit to the bike. Looks like right now it's a little bit tight, so we're going to add a shim. We've got half millimeter and quarter millimeter shims. We're gonna add, start by adding a quarter millimeter to each stud. You always have to add them together, keep them level. So we're gonna add one shim to each side. Reinstall the nuts. And then we're going to check our gear mesh again. You will find as uh, the base height changes, that will also have an effect on the tightness of the levers. 
Um, yeah, so as, since we added um, height to our shim stack, that had a relationship on effectively how far the studs were screwed in relative to that. Um, so you would need to go and adjust the tightness again of the quick connect levers. So until you're set with your stack height, you don't need to get it perfectly dialed in because you're going to be adjusting it until that part's correct. And now it's spinning and it is now we have the proper gap between the gear, uh, between the two gears. So it's spinning the way it should. Take that off. So next step, we're going to be installing the battery tray. The exact uh, look and form factor of these trays is gonna change once we're using our proprietary pack that is still in the final stages of development. Um, but this is going to mount to your water bottle cage. Start and remove the bottle cage bolts. Our trays will provide a fairly wide range of adjustability. Uh, it's important when you are mounting your tray uh, to make sure that the battery is going to clear the shock um, and the rest of the frame. Um, keeping in mind that as suspension compresses, those positions can change. Um, and so making sure that wherever you set the height of your tray is not going to cause any collisions at any point in the suspension travel of your bike um, is an important step. But other than that, the best practice is to have it mounted as low down as possible to keep the center of gravity low and close to the bottom bracket. Yeah, one of the unique challenges uh, from bike to bike is finding the cleanest way to route the harness through the linkage. Um, some frames will allow you to route them inside, others prefer to go outside. It's just a case by case basis to make sure that the harness isn't going to um, obstruct the path of the suspension as it compresses. For this one, we're going to piggyback off of the brake hose, which is typically a good place to start um, as the clearance to get through the shock tunnel is just not quite enough to fit our, our harness without it uh, rubbing. Um, but in some frames, it's a larger, wide open space and you can do that. And then we're going to mount the interface, the connector that'll interface with the drive unit to deliver power and send throttle signals. So as you can see, this uh, connector has a sliding washer, which allows you to raise and lower the, um, the connector. And so it's important to make sure that there is a tight connection and that there is no gap between the motor and the bike side. So if it's loose, you can then slide it up and down. You want to ensure that no gap remains, so it may look good, but you want to hold it in place while you get it secure. Be a good time to go and check and make sure that your quick connect levers are also at the correct tightness, um, as everything is now fixed into position. The way to do that is to start by closing the lever into the uh, upright lock position and begin tightening the stud until you feel resistance. At this point, the lever should be locked into place and close to correct. Um, and then it's a very sensitive adjustment. You'd want to be making an eighth, no more, or a sixteenth, or no more than an eighth of a turn at a time as you go and tighten, and check the tightness until it is secure. You want to make sure that it's not that there's no play, that it can't come loose on its own, and that it can also be opened again. And then you repeat that process for the rear lever. Everything in the rear is complete. Last step here, just uh, throwing the throttle on with our three millimeter Five. Allen wrench. There are two different ways that you can mount your Elevate throttle. Some people prefer to push up, some people prefer to push down, but either orientation is uh, valid. <laughs> It's important to make sure that the pathway of the lever isn't being obstructed. So always check when you're setting the angle. So you can see, 
still get full use of our brake. Then we're just gonna clean up the cable routing a bit. And now that we've got Elevate installed on the bike, it is time to ride.